it's going to bleed even after I take the needle out. Because some of these points will actually bleed after I take the needle out. So let's turn around that way a minute. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. It's all right. It's all right. Relax. 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 Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Easy. Good. Oh, oh, oh. Easy does it. Easy does it. Easy, 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 easy. That's a boy. That's a boy. Good boy. Good boy. Yes. Good boy. Good boy. Now, you notice I pulled that needle out of that point that's a stomach point, and it's bleeding like crazy right now. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho, ho. Relax. Let's bring him up here again. Set my bottle down here so it's out of my way. Good boy, good boy, just relax, relax. Good boy, no, 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 relax, 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 relax. Let's get the other ones out on this side now. Let's just bring them right. Yeah, turn them around a little bit in this little bit. Okay, we've got two needles in the right rear foot and we've got one needle in the back. So we're going to pull these needles out of the foot first. Good. Good. Good job. Good job. Good job. Easy, easy. Easy, 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 easy. Easy, 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 relax, relax, that's a boy. Okay, we got the needles out of his feet. Now, we're going to take the needle out of his back. Now, I mentioned that the hip on this, this was the size that horse had the hip issue going on. The gallbladder point that I just pulled the needle out, the last one, see it's bleeding. There's blockage going on that gallbladder channel that just opened up just as soon as I pulled that needle out a little bit more. The stomach point on that side tend to open up. Uh, these triple heater points on the front opened up a little more. Now, let's go and check across him and see where we're tender at. Let's turn him around sideways so we can Look on both sides, and then I'm going to do the thermographic image on him. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. There you go. So what we're going to do is we're going to look and see where, where he's tender at. Now, we got to remember this horse has been conditioned that this neck hurts. It's going to hurt him. So he may react a little bit right at first and stuff, but I'm going to see if he continues to react. So see, look what he's doing. Now, now I'm going to bury my thumb. See, he's anticipating it's going to hurt, but it's not hurting him. But he doesn't know what to do now because it hasn't hurt. It doesn't hurt like it did before. So he's going to anticipate this a little bit. I come down across the neck. Across the shoulder here, down the neck. And see as I go down across his neck, look how soft his eyes start to get. And he's chewing. It's like, oh, that feels so good. It's almost like having a deep tissue massage on him without massaging him. 
because the body has helped to move a lot of blood. Now, he's anticipating it's gonna hurt down here, so watch. See, it's gone. See that? So down across his back, remember how tender he was right in here? No tenderness down in here. Remember how tender he was across his hip? There you go. Now let's turn him around the other direction. Okay, so we're gonna start up here at the head again. Come all the way down and make sure that there's no problems anywhere along here. See that he's actually almost leaning into my needle a little bit. And his eyes are kind of going, oh yes, that feels good. Let's go down across his neck, down across his shoulder where he was so sore right in here earlier. Down across here. Down behind the rib. He's real reactive right in here. See, that's gone. Go down across his back. Down across this first stifles here. No tenderness here. No tenderness here in the hips. No tenderness along the belly here. Okay, good. Now let me get a thermographic image of him and see what we've got. Yep. Right there, uh, a little bit further. Get my camera booted up here. There we go. Okay. Right there. Right, let me start on this side because this is the side I started with before. Earlier and stuff, does this horse need to be treated again? What I usually tell people is usually to recheck them. Um, I want the owners to check this horse every day. Uh, and what I do is I just take like a cap on a 16 gauge needle, something that dull is about all I need. And basically go down this horse and see if there's spots that still tend to be tender on this horse. Because this horse has had some issues where he's had his neck out his, uh, in two places, uh, got his knee out, he had his back out, he had his pelvis uh, shifted. So what happens is, is in a horse like this and stuff, he could throw it back out again. He may not throw it back out for six months. He may throw it back out in six days. I don't know. So I keep telling him to check this horse daily and see. Uh, when you start working him, slowly build him up. These muscles have a tendency, they develop memory for being out of place when things are out of place. They also have a memory of things being in place. So if something is out of place uh, and you don't get it corrected as far as the blood flow and energy, what happens is it will have a tendency to throw it back out again. What we want to do is to keep these muscles with that permanent memory of keeping things in place. If they do, these horses stay in place and they don't have to have so many adjustments. So many times people are getting chiropractic adjustments so frequently that these horses are constantly throwing them back out because they're not correcting the deeper issues on them because you do have deeper issues. And uh, not to have anybody upset about it, but uh, I treat a lot of horses with chiropractic and acupuncture and find that if these horses are getting repeated chiropractic and they're not adjusting right, is because of the fact they've got a deep acupuncture issue. Treat the acupuncture issue along with chiropractic and they start holding these adjustments. So this horse, if they're checking him daily, I usually tell him, give me a report on him about a week and let me know what he's doing. And I may check him out in three weeks, I may check him out in six weeks, depending on what he's doing. If they get on him and start riding him and they say he's still a little off on the front end, 
or he's off on the back end because I leave that up to the rider. They know what this horse feels like underneath of them. And they can tell me more about what this horse is doing just by telling me how he rides rather than, than me going out and just checking them every two weeks or something like that. Because these horses will tend to balance themselves out a lot quicker uh, if they basically have everything put in place and, and we get the blood flow moving like it's supposed to. So that's the idea behind this. Yes, he probably will need to be checked again, but he may not need any adjustments. I've had some horses where we've adjusted them one time and acupunctured them two or three times and they've done fine. I've had some horses where we've had to adjust them several times because they keep getting so much repeated chiropractic adjustments on them that they just tend to keep pulling things back out of place. And so we want to prevent these horses from doing that. And uh, if uh, the same thing happens with humans, if they're going to chiropractic and getting repeated chiropractic adjustments and they're not holding, it's because of the fact is they've got a deep acupuncture issue and need to have that treated and they will start holding their chiropractic adjustments. So. In, in answer to a lot of these questions and stuff, you, you'll have some of them that basically do have to have it done a little more often. Uh, others rarely have to have it done. They may only have to have it done once or twice a year. Um, but uh, it depends a lot on the horse. The more these horses are responsive, and you see how responsive he is to me, um, uh, the more these horses are responsive to what you're doing with them and how they respond to how you're treating them, uh, the quicker they tend to balance out and tend to be so much better. Uh, and you'll have a you'll have a horse for life as far as and especially a friend for life if they basically start to uh, understand what you're trying to do for them. Hi, uh, oh buddy. So, any other questions that you've got? Any questions, you guys? Well, my question is for tomorrow. Will probably be a last one. Is what I'd always thought for the uni was a last one on why should we call you? When do we know to call you? I think that's the but that's another well that that's that's a good point you know the, the question is is when do you call the veterinarian to come out and do acupuncture chiropractic I think you need to if you understand your horse well enough to know you'll know when he's off what I try to teach owners when they're when we're doing acupuncture on these horses is to look for certain signs on these horses it could be their bowel movements could change it could be their eating habits change it could be the mouth changes these horses don't want their head messed with uh, they have a difficulty in lifting up their leg, or they're stumbling on their front end, or they're stumbling on their back end. Uh, they tend to have problems when you put on the saddle. They tend to be painful when you put on the saddle. They'll, they'll clinch up and uh, they call them girthy. Uh, horses are telling you something when they're girthy. They're telling you something when they're having pain. And you've got to learn to listen to them. If you listen to what they're telling you, they will tell you where the problems are. And once you start to become responsive to what these horses are telling you, you'll figure out their problems much quicker and then you're able to solve them a lot quicker. Um, and uh, then you have a horse that basically stays healthy much longer. You don't have to put a lot of medication in these. A lot of times I see horses, for instance, like a horse like this. I may go out and see this horse that uh, I've seen horses like this that they've had their joints injected, they've had all these other medications given to them and the horses are still not sound because they've totally missed what the issues are. You've got chiropractic issues, you've got acupuncture issues, you've got organs that are not working together. If you get everything working together, then what happens is you don't have to use so much medications. All medications are going to do is just put a band-aid on the symptoms and not solve the problem. We want to get to the deeper conditions and treat the conditions that are so causing all these symptoms. When we do that, those symptoms disappear, the conditions disappear, and the animal stays healthy. Okay. Any other questions? Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You know, now, I, have a, I was a physiotherapist. Oh, okay. So, I so have you some know. background.